morning in Luxembourg City. The national habit of walking to work extends equally to the Prime Minister as to his fellow citizens, some of whom he greets regularly along his route. Like most of Luxembourg's 300,000 citizens, the Prime Minister can express himself equally well in any one of three languages, Luxembourger, German, or French. Bonjour, Monsieur l'Ambassadeur. The Prime Minister begins his daily task of administering good and democratic government to the subjects of Her Royal Highness, the Grand Duchess Charlotte, member of the Royal House that began with Siegfried, founder of Luxembourg a thousand years ago. Luxembourg's sovereign since 1919, the Grand Duchess shares legislative power with the Chamber of Deputies. The Prime Minister's day opens with a review of Luxembourg's press watchful and informed in French, German, and Luxembourger. Merci, monsieur. Now, this is Tageblatt from there. Thank you, sir. Is it getting reviewed on this list? This country's trilingual quality is apparent everywhere. A poster may start off in French and print the punchline in Luxembourger. And in schools, the children change readily from one language to another. Education is public, private schools are unknown, and health care for children is just part of Luxembourg's long-standing and highly developed social security system that goes to work well before a child is even born. Benefits are extended to all who live in the country, including foreign workers, Italian, Belgian, German or French, who are attracted to Luxembourg industries by high living standards and fair employment practices. These men are peaceful and constructive visitors. But in past centuries, their ancestors may have passed this way on missions of war. In the course of 700 years, this Gibraltar of the North was besieged 59 times. Once Europe's greatest power, Luxembourg is today small in area, a compact thousand square miles. That touch on Germany, Belgium and France and just miss the Netherlands. The only nation within the Atlantic community without a coastline, Luxembourg's central and landlocked position makes her a natural headquarters for international organizations. It was here that in 1950, Europe's coal and steel community set up the offices of its High Commission, grouping together the coal, iron and steel industries of France, Germany, Belgium, Italy, the Netherlands and Luxembourg. One common production unit and one common market. Hello? Hello, Hello Roma! 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 Associated in this work with Britain, the CSC also maintains its own information services to record the advances that are being achieved by this unique act of cooperation. In 1950, the community's president tapped the first batch of truly European steel 
mixed from Dutch, French and German iron ore and fired in a Luxembourg furnace. From its own highly efficient steelworks, Luxembourg turns out three million tons of steel a year, a total that makes this small country the seventh steel producer in the world. One Luxembourg worker in three finds a well-paid job in this steel industry that supplies customers in a dozen countries. Number one buyer is neighbor Belgium, linked to Luxembourg since 1922 by an economic union. Ten years ago, the Netherlands joined Belgium and Luxembourg to form Benelux, three nations united in a single international market. In the same spirit, the coal and steel community has already ended customs control over steel, iron and coke along six frontiers. This facilitates vital imports of German coke needed by Luxembourg, as well as smaller quantities from the mines of the Netherlands. Coke from the Netherlands and Luxembourg iron ore. Practical example of Benelux cooperation resulting in steel ordered by Belgium. The local iron mines also supply a valuable byproduct, potash fertilizer, used extensively in the rich and varied agriculture of Luxembourg.
Grand Duchy is one of the fortunate nations of Europe that are largely self-sufficient in food supplies. Highly mechanized mixed farming provides wheat, potatoes, fruit, and dairy products. In eastern Luxembourg are some of the finest vineyards along the whole of the Moselle Valley. This is the land of Elbling, Riesling, and Sylvaner. Fine white wines enjoyed by gourmets everywhere. Before the age of steel, the wealth of Luxembourg depended on her forests. Today, the woodcutters are still at work, though timber is a minor industry. A third of the country is still rolling woodland, unrivaled in Europe for its beauty. Most of the woodcut goes into local furniture factories. And the bark of oak trees is the basis of an ancient tanning industry which still sends its high quality finished skins around the world. Pottery is another old craft that has survived as a modern artisan industry. Not surprisingly, some of the hand-painted designs reflect the more romantic traditions of the country. Castles come as naturally to the Luxembourg landscape as a cottage in Cornwall or a ranch house in the Rockies. Castles that mark the history of Europe and of a country that was once a great military power. The strongholds of rival dukes have become youth hostels and their feudal domains are now a playground for tourists. 
Nevertheless, Luxembourg still keeps military traditions alive in modern style. Ending a long period of neutrality in 1948, Luxembourg joined with 14 other nations of Europe and North America in the North Atlantic Treaty Alliance. Her active contribution to this concept of mutual defense is a highly trained combat force in which every able-bodied man must undergo service and training. This regimental force is a highly mechanized and mobile defense group ready for service within Luxembourg or with other Allied troops under NATO command. A modern aircraft can cross the territory of Luxembourg in three minutes. Nevertheless, to assist the defense of her partners, the Grand Duchy is currently extending her main civil airport by filling in an entire valley. This will provide an additional defense base for NATO aircraft. In the same spirit of international cooperation, Luxembourg has agreed with her neighbors to widen through highways in conformity with those of Belgium, France and Germany, a practical gesture in facilitating travel and defense. One unique contribution of Luxembourg industry is the design and prefabrication of steel structures. Built in Luxembourg, these ready-made buildings, cranes and bridges are taken apart again for shipping out to the final sites where they can be reassembled like giant toys. In the very center of the country, this skill with steel is being used on a project that will remain within Luxembourg. New 800-foot radio masts of ultra-modern design for an international radio and television station. Here, as in all her industries, Luxembourg practices what is probably the most liberal employment policy in Europe. Foreign workers are welcomed and guaranteed the same high living standards and social welfare benefits as Luxembourg workers. Luxembourgers do not fear any loss of identity by entering into a larger international framework. They have confidence in the strength of their national character. The smallest of the Atlantic nations, Luxembourg lives, thinks, and plans internationally a lively example to her partners in the task of building a true community of the 15 Atlantic nations.